talk inside Vidant Arena. Introducing first, the challenger hailing from Birmingham, England. The winner by unanimous decision, Cameroon Usma. You find yourself thinking about Kamara like on a daily basis? 100%. He's always been in my thoughts. You know, I always hate losing, and he was the last guy to make me feel that, and I can't wait for revenge. Oh, I feel good. I'm on a win streak now in the hardest division in the sport. Because I'm respect on my name. My short term goal is to be world champion. My long term goal is to be the best of all time. To have an opportunity now to go back and get it all in one, get the revenge, get the belt, and beat the number one pound for pound. It's going to be an incredible night. He has not lost in seven years, building a hit list of taking out Hall of Famers, including Nate Diaz, Donald Cerrone, and Rafael Dos Anjos. Unbeaten in his last 10 fights, this is Leon Edwards. And now, enter the champion, the number one pound for pound fighter on the planet today. on the planet today. The reigning, defending UFC welterweight champion. Riding the longest win streak in UFC welterweight history and staking his claim as the greatest 170 pounder to ever do it. Welcome, the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman. All right, folks, thank you all for coming out and joining me alongside two of the best athletes on our roster in advance of UFC 278, Usman versus Edwards 2, which is coming up Saturday, August 20th. Bivint Arena, Salt Lake City, Utah. As many of you know, this will be our first pay-per-view event to take place in Salt Lake City. And as you see, we have pulled out all the stops with the main event, the welterweight champ and the pound-for-pound -pound king, Kamar Usman, taking on top contender Leon Edwards in a rematch of their fight that took place back in 2015. Big thank you, by the way, to Ryan Smith of the Smith Entertainment Group for bringing the UFC out to Salt Lake City, and also a quick thank you to Jeff Robbins and the Utah Sports Commission for their ongoing support. We also let you know tickets for UFC 278. Usman versus Edwards 2 are available now at Ticketmaster.com. Don't wait. We expect that event to sell out. All right, we have microphones set up down here on the floor, but we will start in the back. Jose Youngs has a hot microphone. Jose, take it away. First question for the champion, Kamaru. Obviously, we thought this fight might happen earlier in the year, but you were healing up, a couple hand injury. So I guess first question is, what's the health update? Are you 100% ready to go for the Salt Lake City fight? Yeah, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't ready to go. So, you know, it's about time to get back in here. I know you guys miss me. I gave you guys a lot in 2021. So in 2022, it's about time to get, it, get the party started. And obviously, they show the, pro the, the promo package at the beginning. He hasn't lost since you're, you, you fought him. So I'm curious, after your fight, was this a fight you knew might ha you might have to run it back down the road? Yeah, I always gave him his respect that he's a very, very tough individual. But he hasn't lost because he fought me. You know, I made him better. And he went out there and he started wrestling. But when he fights me again, he's going to realize that that wrestling was all for nothing. And final question for the ch my final question for the champion, you've said a lot that you're, you're starting to lap the division and even, even you're on your second, third, fourth lap. So what, when you beat Leon, what lap is this? If he beats, if he beats Leon. Leon. He's right, if. 
you know, a lot has been said about, you know, Leon saying, oh, he's fell in love with his hand, he's, he's, he's fell in love with his striker. And of course, why wouldn't I? You know, I paid Trevor Whitman a lot of money and he deserves every bit of it. And so did Henry Hoof. So why wouldn't I come in there and, uh, and exercise the striking? Of course, I fell in love with my striking. That's why I had more knockouts in championship fights than he has in the UFC his entire career. Absolutely. And yes, I fell in love with my striking, but guess what? You fell in love with your grappling. So, August 20th, we gonna wrestle. I remember my first knockout, it's all good. good question. question for Leon. He's obviously, a lot of people rate him the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Dana White even said that he considers him the greatest welterweight champion. He's even talked about boxing. So how do you rate him as the champion of the UFC in the welterweight division? Um, he's definitely improved, you know. I cannot sit up here and, and I cannot sit up here and lie and say he hasn't improved. He has improved, you know, but I just don't think he is what he think he is, you know. He is, he has improved, like I said, and I, I give you credit, you know, but I, I am looking forward to running this one back. And when I first fought him, I was a 23-year-old kid. I only did MMA five years. I got in when I was 17 years old. Fought him, I was like 23 years old. So now I am a veteran in the sport and I've been doing it for eight years now. Been through ups and downs, been hurt, came back, won, last rounds, headline events. Now here we are, here we are. And this is my dream and I am looking forward to making it happen. Question for Leon again, going off of that. Uh, you know, the UK have only seen one UFC champion, Michael Bisbin. What would it mean for you to bring the title back to the UK? Um, it would mean the world to me, you know, for not just me, just for the, the whole country, for UK, for Jamaica. It would mean, it would mean a lot to, um, to show the guys that, look, you can achieve greatness coming from where you come from. You don't have to move to the States. And I was young, they told me I had to move to the States. When I thought, um, Usman, I went to AKA for my camp, you know, and because everyone's telling me I need to go to AKA. Since then, I've, like you said, I have learned since I fight and I went back, um, restructured my team, and now here we are, seven years on, and I haven't lost. And what's the support been like from the UK fans going into your first title fight? It's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Like, literally, last three years, everyone's stopping me in the streets saying, when are you fighting for the title? When are you fighting for the title? And now here we are, August 20th. We fight for the title, baby. Let's go. And of course, you both fought back in 2015. That was a while ago. You know, how would you say you have evolved as a fighter since that time? And what do you need to do differently? Um, I think everything. You know, I've improved leaps and bounds in all areas. My striking, my grappling, my understanding of MMA. Like I said, when I first fought him, I was doing MMA five, six years. and. Um, now I've been doing it for 30, 30 odd years and I am a seasoned veteran now and I am, I am ready and I truly believe this is my time. You know, I've been ready two years ago, now I'm super ready. Could have gave me enough time to prepare even more, so I am focused and can't wait. But how you get it done? How by you get winning? it done? Though? By winning, bro. What? By winning. All of listen, win, the, listen, everybody listen. here wants to know. Everybody listen. wants you, to you, help you me. You ain't finishing me, bro. You know, no. not. Help me help you. You're not Tell the people me. how you, you gonna get it done. You cannot finish me, champ. Trust me. You what? in you, bro. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? You can't finish me. I can't finish you. Nope. Give me 30 more seconds in the first fight and I would have finished you. Uh, correct? Ah, uh, shut up. No, you wouldn't. You, you, you forgot? Me, you you wanna watch the replays? Rounds? You held me for two rounds. I watched you it You wanna watch the replays? I held I, your I hand and I was it. beating the side of your face in. No, you wasn't. I rewatched the other day. I wasn't. I rewatched it the other day. I wasn't. You rewatched it. You didn't yeah. see me holding your hand, beating the side of your face in. Bruh, you had like. Like a lamb, just beating the side of your no, face you in. 30 seconds. You held me, you held me for two and a half rounds yesterday. Of course. Did nothing. Of course. You, you, said, your striking is, oh. you said your striking is much better. Of course, I'm going to hold you. I don't want to strike and, with you. And, 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 your striking is much better. You came, I held you down. Listen, you and came I beat with your a great face game in. Plan. You came now, the people all want to know how are you going to get it done? You're going to try to wrestle, bruh. It ain't gonna work this time. We're gonna wrestle. We're gonna wrestle. Let's wrestle. Let's hey. wrestle. Let's, Let's wrestle. wrestle. <laughs> We're gonna wrestle. Listen, I'm trying to, the people all wanna know. I want you to help me help you. How are you gonna get it done? When it was my time, I sat in that exact same you. seat. I'm Tyron gonna Woodley. you anywhere listen, the fight goes. Listen, I sat in that exact same and seat and Tyron Woodley asked goes. me, how are you get it done? And I told him, I will dominate you in every fashion of the anywhere game. Anywhere the fight goes, I'm beating you. 
you're going to be. What was the what was the what was the old women did Gazelle, bro? It was done. It, it didn't matter. He yeah, was I want, the champion. I want, I want the pound for pound. I want the baddest man on the planet. Like okay. Today. You said. I want okay. You like that. So you said. I want that, bro. No. What? I want the baddest man on the planet. You said the baddest man on the planet. So. Perfect. Listen, I like you. You my man. I like you. I've done a lot for you. I've done a lot for you. I like you. You know. You know. That man went back there in London. You know, he put his hands on you. You know, and you and man them, you guys didn't do nothing. So I had to handle it for you. That's why I had to knock his head to the moon. You know who I'm talking about. That that boy. Had to I get got him for you. Out of the country. So I like you. Thank me. You had to get escorted out of the country. They, they hid him from me. Hey, you. They you and man them did me. nothing. They, they hid him from me. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know. Thank they you for telling me. They told the Thank police and hit him. Me. That's they, what happened. They hit him? They hit him. You'd have been dead. Don't worry. I got him for you, though. I like you, so I got him for you. Questions for the champ, Kamara Usman. Right back here. Um, do you plan on splitting your camp between Elevation Fight Team and at Sanford? And if so, how are you going to spend time between both camps? On Sunday, I'm in Denver with my coach, Trevor Whitman. You know, we're going to game plan like we always do. We're going to game plan. We're going to prepare. We're going to come out there and put on another spectacular performance. And uh, this, the, this is the big fight here with Leon Edwards. But in your division, there's been talks of doing Hamzat Chimaev and Bilal Muhammad. Do you think that's the fight to make? These guys got to fight each other at some point. You know, I've already left the division. I'm coming back around again. So these guys got to fight each other. You know, I can't just keep picking each guy and fighting them. So, yeah, whoever wants to fight, sign up and fight. And for Leon, uh, I know it's been a really long road to get this title shot. Was there a point you thought this might not happen? Um, nah, I always know it's going to happen. You know, just the when, when it's going to happen. Um, I'll be here winning and keep winning. And as long as you win, you got to get the opportunity, you know. So, um, it was meant to happen in July for this card, but it, it wasn't ready yet. And now here we are, August 20th, and seven weeks, and... It's go time. And do you plan on bringing anyone in your camp for Kamaro's wrestling at all, or just business as usual training camp? Um, my, I got a, a perfect structure in my camp. It's like a boxing camp. It's all structured towards me and what I need to do, and that's the reason why I've been having the results I've been having. And I'll be, I'll be bringing in not just wrestlers, an MMA fighter. This won't be a wrestling versus striker fight. I said that before, and that was the first mistake I made when I opted and left and went to America and tried to work wrestling, you know, and um, this would be a totally different fight. It'd be an MMA mixed martial arts fight. Kamaru, down front. Should you win this fight, it'll be your sixth title defense. Three short of what GSP was able to do. At this point, are you looking to put your name in the record books next to other competitors? Or do you want to leave your name in the record books so that other competitors are chasing you? I don't, to be honest, I don't really worry about that. You know, Leon Edwards is a very, very tough guy. Like, make no mistake, we might sit up here and say what we want to say, but I'm taking him very, very seriously. I took him serious the first time. I was nervous when I had to fight him, and I'm nervous right now having to fight him. So I take him very, very serious. So when I get in there, as long as I take care of business, the record will write itself. But make no mistake, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, he doesn't want to do this anymore, or this and that. I was very, very serious about Proven that I am pound for pound. I was willing to skip middleweight. I'm still thinking about that. and going to go get that light heavyweight title too. You talk about lapping the division. So at this point, how much do you prepare for an opponent as opposed to preparing for the next version of you? I think it's more so the next version of me, which is why I, I made that move over to uh, with Trevor Whitman because I wanted to fine tune a lot of different things. Like, I, I have probably one of the best foundations. You know, being able to start out there with guys like Henry Hooft, I had an incredible foundation, being an excellent kickboxer, being able to learn from some of the best in the world. So now it's just about elevating my game each and every time I step in there. I said it. When I fought Gilbert, I, I said I wanted to go in there and I wanted to put on a, a, an incredible performance, and I did that. And then I said, of course, fighting Masvidal again, I was going to improve and I was going to show a different side, and I did that. So... Hey, I'm going out, to, uh, out there August 20th. I want to put on an incredible performance, and Salt Lake City is in for a treat. Final question for me for you, Leon. 
If you get past the champ, of course you got to take this fight. It's a championship opportunity. If you get past Usman, how much do you have to have that Masvidal fight? Um, after a bit, Usman, I feel like there'll be a rematch because he's deserving. You know, he's been a long reigning champion for a long time. So I feel after a bit, him, we'll have a rematch. And then after that, let that boy go win a few fights, and I would love to run that one back, back in London, back in the UK, and that'd be an amazing opportunity. You know. Just uh, one for Leon over here to your right. Leon, over here. Uh, you guys have talked a little bit about the first fight, 2015. It was so long ago. Can you really even take anything from that fight to apply to this one? Or was it so long ago, it doesn't even matter? Um, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter one bit, you know, like I said. It I'm, matters. No, it doesn't. <laughs> for me, it doesn't matter one bit, you know. I've, like I said, I'm two different complete fighters from what I was back then. and. If he's judging it off that fight, he's already lost already. And um, I'm not judging your me, skills. I don't fight guys for, for their skills. For me, I fight it, their hearts. It doesn't matter at all. It matters. I know and your I'm, heart. It matters. And then just for Kamaru, you mentioned maybe skipping middleweight, going right to 205. Curious, what did you think of that Yuri Prohaska Glover to share a fight from a few weeks back? It was an incredible fight. You know, much respect to both guys. I just think I can beat some of those guys. Some. Now, before y'all killed me, I said some. There are some killers in that division, and I definitely respect that. But I think those guys that were at the top, there was a couple guys out there that I'd probably take out. Do you, do you think this might be maybe not your last fight at Welterweight, but maybe there's another division after the Leon fight that you go to? <laughs> no, you see, right now, the, most, the focus is Leon Edwards. That's the focus. Now, I talk about these guys a lot heavyweight, but the focus is Leon Edwards. Let's not take our focus off of that. This guy's an incredible competitor, an incredible striker, you know, and now an incredible grappler as well. So I take him very, very serious. And hey, you know, if I go out there and do my job, then I'll worry about what comes after that. Last one, you've won 15 in a row. Only one person has had a longer winning streak in UFC history, that's Anderson Silva. If you win next month, you tie Anderson Silva's record. Does it feel like to you that you're in that conversation among the best of all time? I'm just having fun. <laughs> I'm just having fun. As long as I keep having fun, like I said, the records will write itself. So I'm just keep having fun. And when I decide that it's, you know, it's time for me to walk away, you know, I'll make that decision. But it's not now. Thanks, guys. Uh, question for Maru on your left. Uh, what did you have to say about Habib getting inducted into the Hall of Fame? Like, what kind of uh, words of encouragement would you give to Habib on his award? Oh, it's very, very deserving. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, not just as an athlete, but as a person. And so, uh, yes, he, he's told me now I have to kind of put my head down when he walks in the room because he has a Hall of Fame jacket. So I don't have that yet. So I have to give that respect. But Habib is, is you know, an incredible guy. He was an incredible athlete when he was here in this, uh, in this organization. And, you know, I wish him all the best. Right now, he's, he's starting to rewrite what it is to be an MMA coach, you know, by building all these guys. So... Much respect to him, you know, a dear brother of mine, so, you know, nothing but respect. And last question for me, uh, what advice would you have to give to your teammates, Rose Namajunas and Justin Gagey after their losses at UFC 274? You know, it's a tough one. This is the thing with, with the sport. You know, you have your highs of highs and your lows of lows. You know, Rose Namajunas is, I, I've, I'm, this is no secret, I've always said it, you know, one of the most incredible female athletes I've ever seen. I mean, some of the stuff that she even does in practice, I'm just in awe. Like, how is that even possible to do? So, you know, it, it's, it's up to Rose. When Rose wants to come out here and wow you guys, you know, we, she can do it with the head kick, she can do it with the hands. It doesn't matter, she can get it done. You know, it's just up to her when she wants to jump back in here and, and give you guys that Rose and I'm a Eunice again, she will. And with Justin, we all know Justin. We all love Justin Gaethje. Who was not lining up to watch a Justin Gaethje fight? You know, Justin will be back. Justin will be back. He's gonna go to the drawing board like he's always done, and uh, he'll be back here entertaining us in no time. Yeah, question for uh, Leon over here. OG with Full Send MMA. Um, with social media being as as relevant as ever and knockouts going viral, you've been on the wrong side of a couple me uh, social media moments, obviously with the Nate Diaz and the Jorge Masvidal. What would it mean to you to turn Kamaro Usman into, into a meme? Into a meme. Uh, 
I want to turn this into a meme fax, bro. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I've said it before, I, I respect him as a champion and what he's achieved, you know, he's forced me to get better and um, I know somehow he's looking over me, I know he is, you know, and that motivates me in camp and pushes me in camp and to prove the world wrong and prove everyone wrong. I've been saying it for, since going to UFC, I'll fight for the world title and everyone's like, you, you, won't, you won't fight for the world title, now look, here I am, you know, seven years in, rematch and now here we go. Appreciate you, bro. Question for the champ, Amaru. Obviously, there's some young guns in the game, Hamza Chamaya, but there was a guy that fought recently. He's got eight KOs, eight submissions, Shavkat Rachmanov at 170 pounds. What are your thoughts on him? I mean, this, this game is evolving so fast. There's never going to be a, a, a list that's, that's not full of guys that are coming up. You know, when I fought Leon the first time, you know, I knew that that was a guy that I was going to potentially see again. And rightfully so, he's done the work to get here. And he might think I'm overlooking him, but I'm absolutely not overlooking him. I know he's a very, very tough guy. And I know there's a lot of tough guys. There's a lot of killers in this division. You know, the two guys that you just mentioned, you know, uh, Vicente Luque, Gilbert Burns is still here, Kobe Covington, Sean Brady. There's a lot of guys that are in this division that are still coming up. And I have my eye on all of them. You know, as long as I'm sitting up here at the top, they all have to train for one guy. I have to train for everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Greg Ivory uh, with Bleacher Report betting. This, mess, this question is for the champ. Last April, I was here with Chad Ochocinco, and unfortunately, he bet against you. But he sent me back, because we got to get that money back. And I want to know, and the people from BR Betting want to know, are you a lock? against Edwards. Now, you know, too bad Chad is not here. You know, I just did the I Am Athlete and I was waiting for him. I was waiting for him. You come to my press conference and you gonna tell me you gonna bet against me? Come on. You know, everybody knows when Kamaru Usman's fighting, you don't bet against him. And so, of course, your money's safe if you bet on me. Champ, I got another question for you. You talked about boxing Canelo Alvarez. Do you think you'll be the favorite in the matchup oh, come on. based off his recent performance? No. Listen, listen, this is the thing that people are, are misconstruing. Like, I don't, I'm not saying Canelo is not great. He is great, which is why I wanted to, to step up to that challenge. He's the pound for pound best boxer out there. I understand that. That scares me, which is why I wanted to. It scared me. When I fought Leon Edwards the first time, it scared me. This is a striker, you know, I'm a wrestler, I'm trying to learn striking. It scared me. It's scaring me right now, sitting up. You can see me. You don't see me shaking? It's scaring me sitting up here right now. You know, of course I wanted to take that challenge. And I'm still a little bit afraid of it, but, you know, Canelo kind of dropped a little bit, so, you know. That you know, when he gets back up, you know, he puts a couple more wins you want together, to you know. I, yeah, he puts a couple Canelo. more wins that together, we'll maybe to I'll give him that shot. You want that dough, bro? You want that money? What? You ain't beating Canelo. You want that money? You said I'll beat him? You ain't beating him. Oh, I thought she was on my side. Damn. Bruh. I like you. Damn. Oh, shit. I thought, you know, yeah, MMA yeah, fighters yeah, got to stick together. Canelo, you see bro. him? Get paid, bro. Come on, man. I thought she was on my side, bro. My question is for Leon. Um, after being the most unlucky UFC fighter, of the past few years. I wouldn't say unlucky. He's sitting up here right now, so he's not that unlucky. Um, what was your reaction when you got the phone call that you got the shot? Um, I don't see it as unlucky. I see it as it gave me more time to improve myself, more time to get better and to put myself in a position where I am more than confident to win the world title, you know? And like I said, I was ready two years ago and um, they gave me another, I had six cancellations of fights, six training camps, had six, camps to improve myself and get better, you know, and um, so, yeah, I want to say I'm lucky. I'm just more focused and more better than what I was two or three years ago. Thank you for that. And Kamaru, coming off a major hand surgery, um, does that affect your confidence at all going up against an elite striker like Leon? No. I think um, I was trying to rush myself in here because you know, I wanted to be the guy up here right now weighing in for you guys to watch. And so I was trying to rush myself to get here International Fight Week. 
and give you guys an amazing performance. But unfortunately, I had to listen to my doctors and really let that hand heal because you guys all know, when I throw that right hand, I'm trying to bang someone's head off. And finally, uh, Kamaru, your brother is currently competing on The Ultimate Fighter. How important would it be for you to fight on the same card for him or even him just being in the UFC? I don't know if I want to fight on the same card as him. You know, if you've ever seen my brother in my corner, you know that's the ultimate hype man. You know, you kind of need him. I need my brother there hyping me up too. So, you know, I don't, if it happens, it happens. But I love cornering him. I love being a, a voice of reason for him. And I love having him in my corner because you know you're not messing with me. My brother's around me. So I'm extremely excited. I can't wait for you guys to see what he's going to, the fighter that he's going to grow into in that heavyweight division. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. If you do want to join us for UFC 278 in Salt Lake City, Utah, August 20th, you can go to Ticketmaster.com. We're going to get our matchmaker, Mick Maynard, up here. He's going to stare these gentlemen off. And don't forget, top of the hour, ceremonial weigh-ins for UFC 276. Thank you all very much for coming out.